So I want to give the floor now to Phil um, from the Northwind team. Normally, we begin these meetings with the general updates, and they include an update on what's going on in Washington, actually some in interesting developments <laughs> just in the last few days. Uh, but because that's part of what the Northwind team is going to be working on, they will be talking about those issues. So, Phil, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And th thank you uh, uh, for the uh, opportunity that you're presenting to us to put before you uh, this, uh, this major project on behalf of, that we're performing on behalf of Southern California Edison uh, the, and the community, uh, as represented in particular by this, uh, this, this uh, engagement panel. Uh, Chairman Victor and community engagement panels, uh, my colleagues and I are pleased to be here to talk about the project uh, that we know of as, as of high interest uh, to your community, particularly moving songs, spent nuclear fuel off-site as soon as possible. That's the goal. I am one of uh, uh, our team's leaders. Uh, Elizabeth Helvey is out in the audience. She's uh, also uh, a, a co-leader with me. And uh, we are responsible for delivering an actionable strategic plan to Southern California Edison for the spent fuel removal from songs. Underpinning our work is a recognition that the strategic plan uh, must have broad-based community and state support if successful implementation is to be achieved, and it is with this recognition that we welcome this opportunity to be with you this evening. I want to single out in this regard uh, one of our team members, Mary Woolen. Many of you probably have met by now. Uh, Mary here in, uh, on, the, uh, on my left, uh, she's responsible for our stakeholder engagement. And uh, it's a, it's, as I suggest, indicating, it's a significant uh, piece of responsibility we have to have this ultimately, uh, this product ultimately, ultimately generated to have broad-based community support. I have two colleagues with me this <coughs> evening, uh, jo, uh, Brian uh, Gutherman and Joe Heiser. Uh, Brian is our regulatory and licensing expert, uh, and Joe is charged with making sure our local songs focus is well anchored in the national policy and legislative environment. And, uh, and the two of them will uh, uh, offer a perspective uh, for you. The next slide, please. So this is a simple cartoon. It uh, pro portrays the system that needs to be in place to safely and securely move spent nuclear fuel from songs and the context within which that success must be accomplished. Simply, songs needs to be ready to ship spent fuel, and a receiving site needs to be found to ship it to. Connecting songs to a receiving site is the transportation system. So that's the simple cartoon. The guiding legislation for this program, the Nuclear Waste Policy Act, became law in 1982. It mapped out a process for siting a repository to permanently dispose of the waste, as well as an interim storage facility uh, that, uh, for, for consolidated waste until the repository is available. Congress confidently expected the repository to be operational in 1998. As we know, that didn't happen. And that milestone has obviously been missed. Our view is first principles dictate that public safety and security must be the first and highest priority. It follows then that the public must have confidence that its health and safety is protected if the song's spent fuel is to be moved, moved to a new location. So uh, what SCE has done is brought together uh, national experts in the form of the experts team that Tom Isaacs uh, presented to you and in its contract with uh, national experts convened by the Northwind Group. Our task is twofold. Develop a strategy for successfully relocating songs spent fuel off-site, including all the elements that are represented on this. Uh, you should uh, go to the next slide, please. Uh, so all the elements that are uh, on this slide r relative to moving the spent fuel are going to be encompassed within our work. And the second... Uh, 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 task is to help SCE be ready to move the, the fuel when the opportunity does arise. Like the experts team that Tom chairs, we have a multidisciplinary, multi-talented team with depth and breadth of experience to help. Our team includes engineering, regulatory, transportation, legislative, and policy expertise. Uh, you have before you the, the panel, a, a set of bios. I won't walk through that, but you will. Uh, you can uh, discern from the bios uh, the, the kind of experience that we bring to the table. 
Thanks. We should make sure those bios are posted on songscommunity.com as part of the meeting materials. Yes, sir. And they're, they're also available at the front table uh, for the, the public. Uh, and they will be posted on our website. Um, we are particularly pleased to have as a senior advisor the former Secretary of Energy, Ernie Moniz. Beyond our professional experience, we are also professionally motivated to help the nation solve this problem, as we've been working it for decades, many of us. We see songs as a potential catalyst for action. This is the unique part, that, so, that, uh, that songs is a utility that's pursuing a solution uh, uh, independent of federal initiatives. And an opportunity to reestablish a sense of urgency uh, that has been lacking for decades. And so with that, let me uh, ask Brian to tell more in more detail about the spent fuel management system that must be put in place to uh, successfully get the spent fuel off-site. Brian? Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Phil, and thank you to the panel for uh, giving us the opportunity to give you this briefing today. What I'd like to do is, is augment what Phil said with a high-level overview of the regulatory aspects of moving the song spent fuel to another location. Our team affectionately refers to this figure as the barbell, which is apropos given the heavy lifting that's involved both literally and figuratively to move spent fuel. On this slide, I've overlaid some key questions onto the basic information conveyed by, conveyed by the barbell. The left side represents the current state. To the right of that circle represents the twin challenges of transportation and either interim storage or disposal. The alternate alternatives we will evaluate include new ideas as well as solutions we're familiar with, most prominently the proposed private interim storage facilities in New Mexico and Texas. Many of you may be familiar with the fact that the Federal Nuclear Regulatory, uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission has primary regulatory responsibility for the three elements in the barbell. What you may not know is other federal agencies are also involved and coordinate closely with NRC. This includes the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Transportation. And in addition to the federal regulatory agencies, the states, the Indian tribes, counties, and municipalities have a say in the transportation of hazardous and radioactive materials through their lands. All these intertwined regulatory requirements added to the large number of other stakeholders involved are why the transportation piece of this undertaking is largely separate from the strategic plan. The strategic plan will be evaluating issues such as modes of transportation after leaving the site and ensuring songs spent fuel canisters are ready for transportation when the time comes. The future conceptual transportation plan will take a deep dive into the details of how spent fuel shipments from songs will be planned and executed. Slide, please. So as you can imagine, there are a number of difficult and interconnected questions to, the, to be answered in analyzing the alternatives for moving the spent fuel off of the song's site. Many of the questions are influenced by who possesses the fuel and who owns the fuel. They're not necessarily synonymous. Many of the questions are influenced by, oh, I just said that. Since 1982, federal law has said that DOE would be the owner, shipper, and caretaker of the spent fuel once it's picked up at the plant sites. And that paradigm has existed for 35 years, and it's been the driving force be, be, behind industry and government thinking about how to deal with spent fuel. However, in recent years, private industry has stepped up and said, well, why don't we provide at least an interim solution to this problem until the federal government meets their obligation? Out of this came the proposed facilities in New Mexico and Texas. With that in mind, the timing of this project could not be better. Given no repository program currently exists, centralized interim storage is fast becoming a realistic short-term solution. That said, this project will take a long and broad look at a range of government and private alternatives with the end goal of allowing San Onofre site to be fully decommissioned and the land returned to the Navy. Whether it's a government solution or a private solution, one thing will not change. SCE will need to make sure the spent fuel canisters are ready to ship when that time comes, and our team will help SCE understand what they need to do and when they need to do it to be ready. With that, I'm going to turn over to Mr. Joe Hazir, who's our legislative and funding expert. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Brian described for you uh, the sort of the regulatory and some of the business model issues that we'll be considering in the strategic planning process. And I'd like to talk for a few minutes about sort of the legislative and sort of the legislative and funding uh, landscape 
and some of the challenges that we will be looking at and, and need to address is we need to think about how we move forward on, on, uh, on these alternatives. So if you can, uh, on this slide here, I just listed several of the uh, current legislative uh, initiatives that pending in Congress, as well as some of the funding issues that we'll be uh, looking at. And so let me talk a little bit about some of these. But let me start off by saying, and again, picking up on the point that, that, uh, that, that Brian made here, that uh, it has been federal policy now uh, since the 1980s that the federal government would take title and move and dispose of the spent nuclear fuel. Uh, and, and since that time, the primary focus has been on development of a uh, geologic repository at Yucca Mountain. Uh, however, we've been in a situation now where the licensing of the Yucca Mountain Repository has been stalled now for almost a decade. The last time the Congress appropriated funds to uh, do work on the Yucca Mountain license was almost 10 years ago, it was in fiscal year 2010. And so right now there are some legislative alternative actions underway to try and uh, break through this stalemate and, and move forward with a, uh, with a national plan. Uh, the most recent one is the one that's the first one on that uh, bulleted list there. Uh, just yesterday, the Energy and Commerce Committee in the House uh, reported out a bill, the McNerney Shimkus bill, uh, that would um, move forward with both a uh, further action to move forward on the Yucca Mountain license, as well as to authorize um, an interim storage program. But while this legislation would authorize and direct more federal action, it does not provide the funding to do so. So that requires separate action and an appropriations bills. Uh, there are also some legislative proposals uh, to authorize a uh, consolidated interim storage program that would enable uh, some of the concepts that Brian talked about to be able to move forward, uh, including the one uh, in the Senate in the Murkowski-Alexander Feinstein bill and also in the Senate Appropriations Bill. And uh, so we have some action going on both of these fronts. The key issue is that Congress is wrestling with right now is the linkage issue. Uh, because I think while there's a consensus that if we do move forward with some form of interim storage of spent nuclear fuel, that that, that should only be interim, and that eventually it must lead to some permanent disposal in a geologic repository. The question then is how tightly the linkage is set. The House legislation sets the linkage very tightly so that milestones in one are directly tied to milestones in the other. Some of the other bills, particularly in the Senate, uh, authorize uh, uh, forward action on an interim storage program, but kind of leave unresolved what the next steps would be with respect to the uh, repository program. So in, in tandem with this uh, work on legislation on the uh, um, new authorizations, there's also this issue about what to do about the funding. And the funding issue is that not that there's a lack of resources, but rather it's the ability to get access to and to spend those resources. Uh, the, the federal government currently is holding a special fund that has a balance of over $42 billion, which has been set aside to pay for the cost of a national program for disposal of uh, nuclear waste. Uh, and this fund is currently sitting in the Treasury accruing interest at a rate of over one and a half billion dollars annually. Uh, the fund was really initially populated by fees that were paid by the nuclear power generators. And in fact, over its operations history, the uh, customers of uh, uh, Songs uh, paid in over $480 million into this fund. And when you look at the amount of interest that has accrued over the time, the share of interest uh, uh, that's pro rata associated with those fees is about another 500 million. So in total, there's uh, about a billion dollars that's in this fund that has been put into this fund by the customers of Songs for the disposal of the fuel from the Songs nuclear plant. And, and these monies are in addition to the trust fund 
that SCE currently holds to pay for the uh, decommissioning of the plant. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, the problem has been that, that there's been no appropriations from this fund now for almost 10 years, and that's been the major cause of the, uh, the, the current impasse. And this, this lack of action by Congress on the funding has led to a series of uh, uh, litigation and, and lawsuits against the federal government. Um, and as a result of those, uh, the federal government has been held in partial breach of contract for not uh, living up to its legal responsibilities for taking title and disposing of the spent nuclear fuel. And consequent to that, the federal government is responsible, liable for damages, which they are now paying out in the form of paying for the cost of maintaining the safe storage of the spent nuclear fuel at the reactor sites until such time as a disposal program or some form of a storage program is put into place. So let me conclude by just simply saying that, that right now then our task in the strategic planning process is to identify potential actions that can be taken to address some of these challenges to enable one or more of the alternatives that we'll be looking at to be able to move forward. And so with that, I'm going to turn it back to Phil to kind of wrap up uh, this discussion. Is it on the legislative issue, Dan? Uh, it's just a, it's a question of do we estimate that that billion dollars is going to be adequate for moving the fuel? There have been studies by DOE. Of course, DOE looks at it as a national program, but when you look at all the money that's in the fund and the costs that, have, uh, that would be needed to, to implement the program, right now it looks as if there's sufficient monies in those funds. And right now DOE, again, by virtue of another court decision, is not collecting any new fees. So we're just simply allowing the, the monies in the fund to continue to accrue interest. Although with Thank our you. track record at Yucca Mountain, our capacity to spend very large <coughs> amounts of money and get nothing done is truly impressive. Um, it seems like the real story here is the interim storage story. So I just want to ask you, Joe, one question about that, which is the standard wisdom in Washington is that during a two-year congressional term, most of the serious work gets done during the first year, because the second year everybody's focused on elections. This next year is going to be a particularly intense year on the election front. So here we are at the end of the first year. We've had a bill, the House version just come out of committee. We've had now both on the Senate and the House side action on appropriations, but not final action. What do you expect will happen this congressional term on that slide of all the different cool things that could be done? The, the sense that, that we have is that there, there clearly is an interest and a recognition among the leaders in Congress on both sides that something needs to get done. And, and it's, it's moving very slowly. It's get, it gets tied up in other issues. For example, you know, the appropriations process right now is hung up over other issues like funding for the border wall, for example. But um, I just simply, I, I won't make a prognostication, but I'll simply make an observation, which is that when you look at the history of nuclear waste legislation, the action has always taken place right around the time of an election. So the 1982 Act and the 86 Act all happened right around at the, at the end of a Congress rather than in the first year of a Congress. Okay, great. Thank you very much. If we could find a way to link this to a Ukrainian gas company, maybe they'll focus on it even more. So uh, thanks, Joe and Brian. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a real pleasure to work with these uh, two individuals as well as the, the full team, a very committed group of individuals. I want to commend SCE for taking the, this matter head on. No other utility, as I mentioned earlier, has taken, and as Tom has mentioned, has taken on this goal and put resources toward it, uh, solving uh, an arguably federal government responsibility. Uh, we began working with uh, SCE in uh, June of this year, uh, and our work will continue through at the end of next year uh, when we expect to have the uh, strategic plan finalized and, uh, and then in hand by SCE to execute in 2002, uh, starting in 2021. The next slide, please. Um, so, as I have suggested earlier on, we hope a hallmark of our work will be our engagement with the community. Uh, I started with a description of the challenges being predominantly social and political. Uh, from our view, broad community support for SCE's implementation of the strategic plan is essential for its success. 
Therefore, we encourage the CEP and the communities to stay engaged with this project over the next year, track our progress through our website, uh, and submit your ideas and comments. The website is uh, now up and running. It uh, can be found through the songscommunity.com uh, website and, and just go to the strategic plan and it'll take you to a description of the project and also the, uh, the bios of uh, our, uh, of our team members and also a, uh, a, a space for public comment, give us feedback, give us ideas for how to proceed ahead. And uh, again, I want to thank everybody for this opportunity and happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Ted Gwynn? Yeah, um, just very quickly. Um, number one, the, uh, the Congressman Levin has a task force that many of us serve on, and we're actively looking at options in this. So the output is certainly beneficial. Number two, the Coastal Commission at their hearing was express their complete frustration at this being um, put on the, the shoulders of Edison and everyone else that the federal government had not made a decision and they shared it with us and number three I think to the chairman when there can be things that we can do I ask you to have us all be involved because we have a very active public that would like to be involved more. I just want to particularly pick up on that we would welcome along the way we have quarterly meetings you know, a slide or two of an update of what you're working on, and then also places where we can get involved. So at times, at critical times, we've gone, some of us have testified to Congress, we've gone to the Hill, we're doing all kinds of stuff. We have a tremendously active community that wants action in this area. We may disagree on some things, but almost everybody agrees on this. So we need some guidance. And, and we're, we, will, we're, we are going to help provide that at, at the right moments and with the right suggestions for how to uh, proceed ahead. Okay. I wanted to comment on the task force's work. I understand that, that, that they will have products in the not too distant future. We will certainly um, take that product into our account as we do our work. Uh, and we, um, uh, Joe mentioned the Congressman, it didn't, didn't had on a slide Congressman Levin's legislation, but we're well aware of, of his initiative in that regard. Right. Thank you very much. We need to move on. 